everyone, Shaber 1000 here. Today, I'm going to check the spark plugs in this thing and see what they're like because last time we had it out, it was running kind of funky on low, low RPM. Didn't want to idle and just above an idle, it was just... You know, like when you're in a no-wake zone or something, it was just kind of, kind of missing, cutting out. So we're going to pull these plugs out. I still got the old ones. I always save these two-stroke engines, especially the old ones like this, notorious for fouling plugs out because, well, they burn oil, and that's because they're two-cycle oils mixed in with the gas. So it's inevitable you know you're burning oil you're going to foul a plug out so i kept the old two which was running fine on it but when i put the new head on i went ahead and put new plugs in it so we're going to pull these plugs out and, and we're going to see what they look like i'm i'm still not sure if it was a carburetor issue or what so let's get you up here i'm not going to do an intro or nothing we're just going to we're just messing around it's supposed to rain today so um don't want to get into anything too major. I figure at least with this, I can throw the engine cover back on real quick if I have to. That's right here. Because, yeah, when I went to pull it up on the trailer, the uh, it didn't want to start. And then as soon as I got it on the trailer, it fired right up. So, I know it's going to need a carburetor cleaning, but... I just think I don't have that kind of time today because I think the rain's coming. That looks weird. Into that plug here. Let's get that pulled out and I'll show you. It doesn't look real bad, does it? That's the top one, which would be the number one. We got a little bit of rust around there. Right there. Not sure what that is. You can see that? Around the top of that? That dark spot? Okay, so that's the top one. Let's pull the bottom one out. This is the one I had to put that helicoil in, that repair kit. So hopefully it stays in and the plug comes out. No, and it didn't. But it doesn't look real bad either. It's got the same thing around there. Uh, it's been leaking right there, so these things not, they don't seal up right. See that? That shouldn't be there, that's coming out, not dripping down as you can see. That's actually coming out of the cylinder, so I'm definitely losing compression on this cylinder uh, see this piece was supposed to stay in see the difference this piece here was supposed to stay in there and it didn't but the plug doesn't look bad so it could be a carburetor issue um, Because there's no valves in this, you know. Well, it's got reed valves in it. Hmm. I was going to just go ahead and put the, the old plugs in it. They look pretty good. That was after three runnings with these old plugs. 
I'm definitely going to put the one on top in. See, it looks like it was leaking too. There could be an issue right up here on this head, not sealing. If you have that issue, you're losing compression. So I'm going to go ahead and put this old one back in here. Because I can change these out on the lake, you know. I, it's not a big deal, as you can see. Put that one in. Yeah, this insert was supposed to stay in there. And it didn't. And of course it doesn't want to go in straight. I may have to go get my tool, clean them threads up on that. That's what I'm gonna do. Let me go grab my tool. We'll clean the threads up. I may just put it was running pretty good with these I may just put the old ones back in it yeah I'm gonna do that hang on a second okay this is that set comes with this what you do is you ring this down into the spark plug hole and it, it cuts new threads and uh, then you put one of these inserts in I got the shortest one in uh, thought about put one of these in the truck in the Toyota but I changed my mind because well that's not as easy to get to as this I can pull this head off here in five minutes if that and the truck well that's a lot that's a lot of doing you know what I mean so let's go ahead we're gonna screw this on here Put this down in here. We're gonna screw this in. Here, get you up here. Maybe you can see a little better. Kind of clean these threads up. If you guys are doing this on whatever vehicle, make sure that piston is down so you don't hit your piston. I mean, you still could be in a carburetor, I don't know, but... Now you're supposed to put some Loctite on this and I can't find my Loctite so and as you guys saw it didn't really hold it in that well so because that's supposed to stay in when you pull your plug out all right we'll set this over here make sure I got the right plug now let's see if we can get this one started yeah, I know for a fact it was leaking here, guys. I'll show you real quick. Let's 
See that? Right down through there, it's leaking. It's coming out of here. It does feel a little buggered up there, cause, but this is the hole that was bad when I got the head. So, I still got my old head, but it's warped, so I may have to plane it down myself. But yeah, that's what causes that. It's leaking there, so like I said, if you're leaking around that plug, it's losing compression. You know, so you don't ever want to start, start an engine with just plugs finger tight because if you do and it's leaking, you're going to lose compression. It's not going to run right. It's not going straight. So I'm going to fiddle around with this. Uh, comes a Jeep pulling a boat. <laughs> yep, boaters. <laughs> Never seen that guy before in my life. <laughs> he sees me working on my boat. He's towing his boat. Tap the horn. Okay, let me see if I can get this going straight. If not, oh. See, this one stayed in. It's not all the way in. That little insert stayed in on this one. Down in there. Yeah, can you see that? So, all right. Let me fiddle around with this. And I'll be back with you. Sometimes it's just, you know, you just got to get them till they go straight. And then, you know, sometimes they'll run in a little hard all the way in. But make sure they're straight. So let me go ahead and mess around with this. And I'll be, whoops, I'll be right back with you. All right, I got them in there. I got it in there, but it doesn't look straight to me. But who knows? So I think what we'll do, we'll start it up real quick and uh, I know it should be in the water I'm not worried about that but yeah they're right it should be in the water but when you start them up but Let's see how well this thing starts. Uh, let me squeeze the primer bulb. I need. I want to check the gas too. We'll see how much we used. Well, I thought for sure this thing would be would have used a lot of fuel, but it's actually used less than when we usually go out. So I still didn't squeeze that primer bulb. Okay, choke it. Still, it's hard to start. All right, monkey's back. Hang on, guys. All right, let's try this again.
So anyway guys, as you can see the lid's back on, but there's still more video to come because I I don't know what I filmed and didn't film. So anyway, I'll start it back up for you again, as you'll see. <laughs> this is all after the fact, so I just thought I'd throw it in now. Sounds good, revved up wide open like Monkey says. Sounds real strong. We had the Corvette fired up one day and I was revving it up, dead revving it, clearing its throat out, you know. She said, sounds real strong. I got that on ring doorbell camera. Check it out. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so I just, uh, <laughs> I was sitting here talking to you. I'm not recording. So as you can see, I had it running. Uh, I don't know how much of that recorded, but anyway, it's still low speed. I don't know. I think it may need a set of rings. Uh, but I'd like to, before I rip that thing apart, I'd like to find just another engine put on it before I put a whole bunch of money into this one. So, uh, like I said, it's revving up high, fine, but low speed, it doesn't want to run right. So, anyway, I'll just have to get it out on the water and and see, but, you know, I I don't know, guys. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I can run a compression test on it sometime. I'm not going to do it today because it looks like rain. Uh, we'll run a compression test on it, and that'll tell me if the rings are bad or not, you know, uh, how much compression I got. So, anyway, as you've seen... I can't even remember if... <laughs> anyway, I pulled the plug wires off one at a time, and they both made a difference at just off an idle. So, um, that's telling me the, the spark plugs are working. And when I go wide open, especially in gear, see, if you got it neutral, it won't go wide open. So when you put it in gear, it will go wide open. It's designed that way. There's nothing wrong with it. And... Um, it just runs fine but that thing always did run funny at an idle or off an idle so uh, it, it can still be in a carburetor um, when you're just when you're going through a no wake you're just off an idle and you adjust the, the slow speed on it it doesn't really make that much of a difference unless you go extreme one way or the other so it could, still could be in a carburetor. They were supposed to have cleaned it, but I don't know if they did or not. And if they did, did they really clean it or just take it apart? Kind of do what I just did, spray it down. I don't know. We'll have to get it on the water and see. Anyway, thought I'd bring you along with me on this Saturday. So, you know, hopefully you guys are having a great weekend. Um, we, uh, Monkey's been looking forward to the Cooter Festival and uh, <laughs> for those of you guys that don't know what the Cooter Festival is it's a, a three-day party in the park for strictly adults no just kidding it's a turtle down here it's called a turtle or it's called a Cooter the turtle the Cooter turtle and we haven't gone for the past couple years because they were rebuilding the park which is great it looks beautiful and then you know we had we had the 19 roll up on us so <laughs> you know what i mean the rona came around and so you know we didn't go so she took her mom down there last night because her mom's never been there and she wanted to go see it so she took her down there last night and i'll tell you what it went to crap hardly anybody was there and once they got there it was 20 dollars to park used to be free then she found a place to park and went there and come to find out you have to buy tickets in advance because they rolled up this country jam this country music jam thing which is another festival they rolled it up into one into the cooter festival 
I think they're trying to edge a cooter festival out that's been 100 years or whatever, you know? And it used to all be free. And in order to do that, you have to go online and buy tickets or bundle tickets. And online it said $45 up to $2,000. Hmm. Well, anyway, she talked to a guy that was there and he paid $100 for the three days for a VIP. And so if you didn't pay, you weren't allowed to go in the park. I wanted to go down there today and hold a sign because, you know, first of all, it used to be free. Second of all, we've already paid for that park. We paid for the park to be, you know, all refabished, refurbished, and, you know, all redone, which, like I said, it's beautiful. They did a great job. But now they're charging to use the park for them three days because there's music there. So, like, if you walk your dog every day at 6 p.m. through that park, you can't do it this weekend. They won't let you in there. And I think that's against our constitutional rights for them to say, you can't go in that park unless you pay us money. I don't care. That is not right. Okay? I understand the bands have to be paid. I understand, you know, you got to buy stuff from the vendors. That's cool. I get it. But the band being paid is supposed to be our tax money that does that. So she was talking to a vendor that was there. And I guess the, uh, I don't know if it was the Parks Department or, you know, whoever from, from the mayor's office or whatever, whoever's into that, was going around and asking the vendors for 20 extra dollars on top of they, them paying for their vending space to park their trailers and stuff, to sell stuff. They was going around asking if they could get 20 more dollars because they had to pay the bands. They didn't even have enough to pay the bands. Now, here's my question. What if I walked through there and was walking up to every vendor saying, I need $20, I gotta feed my family. I'd be put in jail, you know? That's ridiculous. They don't want a guy sitting on, on the sidewalk down there playing music. He'll, he's in threat of arrest because he's playing his guitar and he's got a can there accepting donations, but they can have a three-day party and charge up to $2,000 to go to this party. So I don't know, like I said, um, so we're thinking about taking a boat down there. I don't know if we will today because it looks like rain, so maybe tomorrow it's the last day taking a boat down there because the park's right on the lake. Just pulling right up there and sitting in the boat and seeing if they say anything because they damn sure can't close that lake off. So anyway, that's another video. But, so that's what was going on. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Shea Bear, the Myth, the Man, Legend. I'm gone for now. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Have a great weekend, and happy Halloween.